Rob here at eTrailer.com and today you're going to be taking a look at the Roadmaster battery charge line kit for towed vehicles on our 2014 Jeep Cherokee. Now whenever you're flat towing your Jeep behind your motorhome, the whole purpose of taking it is so that once we get to the campgrounds we can take our car out, go to dinner, run to the gas station, it's just a lot easier to drive our Cherokee around rather than driving our motorhome. But part of the problem comes into play whenever we're flat towing our Cherokee, if we do a long extended period of time, the battery can drain whether that's because of the braking system or any other components that may stay on. But our charge line is gonna make sure that when we get to our destination, we can jump in our Cherokee and not have to worry about finding somebody to jump our car. And the way our charge line kit is gonna work is it's gonna take the 12 volt power source from the back of our seven way in our motorhome, send it through our umbilical cord to the six way or whatever plug we have on the front of our Jeep. Now on the inside of here on one of the pins, we have our charge line, just a wire going up to a breaker that's gonna be hooked to the battery. And that breaker is going to make sure that it doesn't overcharge our battery because it's only going to provide 15 amps while we're hooked up. One thing to keep in mind about the charge line kit is you are going to need that 12 volt power source at the seven way at the back of your motorhome. If you don't have a constant 12 volt power source, you can pick up a motorhome charge line kit here at eTrailer.com and that is going to be sold separately. Now keep in mind that's only going to be one component you need for a complete safe flat tow setup. For a complete setup, you're going to need a base plate, a tow bar, tow bar wiring, a braking system, and finally safety cables. But if you're tired of jumping your Jeep every time you get where you're going, stopping every few hours to charge the battery, extending your trip out farther and longer, the charge line kit's gonna take care of all of that. Cause once it's installed, there's no extra steps. Every time we hook up and we're towing it, it is gonna put that trickle charge to our battery and maintain it. But now that we know how it works and seeing what it looks like, let's go ahead and install it together. To begin our installation, we want to find the connector that our towed vehicle wiring is on on the front of our vehicle. We need to pull the plug off so we can get access to the connectors on the back. Yours may be mounted a little bit differently, but you just want to pull that connector out. With ours, it's bolted in, so I'm going to use a 716 socket and wrench to pull them out. In our case, we don't have a lot of slack here to pull our connector out. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the bracket so we can get access to the back of the connector. I wanna take our length of red wire that provided us in our kit. We're gonna strip back the end of it. Now if we look at our plug, we have a six way round. So we should have this center pin open. That's gonna be our 12 volt power source. So I'm gonna take a small screwdriver, loosen up, the set screw. We'll put our wire into the terminal, tighten it down, double check that it's nice and secure. Now before we put the dust cover back, I'm going to take the other end of my wire and I'm actually going to slide it through the dust cover. That way it'll be nice and uniform for with, the, with the rest of my tow bar wiring. I just want to pull the slack through for now. So we can put everything back together and we put the dust cover back on and remount the plug. And once you have your wire hooked in and the plug mounted back in place, we're going to take the end of our wire and we're going to route this along the bottom of the bumper up into the engine bay real close to our battery. Now when you're running it through here, it may be a little difficult because the fascia is in place. So if you are putting your base plate on, I suggest doing it all at the same time because it is going to be a lot easier. But if you're doing it after the fact, don't worry, we can still get it there. I just suggest using a coat hanger, an airline tube, or something so you can feed it down from the top down to the bottom, and then we can attach our wire and pull it through. It makes it a lot easier trying to do that rather than try to cram your hand in between in the openings of the fascia. Now once you have your wire inside, I suggest putting a zip tie towards the first spot so it doesn't fall back down, that we just, we have an anchor point and the slack will be loose. We don't have to worry about it falling down towards the radiator, hanging down, causing any kind of problems. But now that we have our wire up here, we're gonna need to find a spot that we can mount our breaker in. Now the breaker is pretty small, but we need to be able to access both the posts on it. So if we come over towards our battery, just come back a little bit right on the edge here, we got a spot, we could actually mount it right against the metal right here. It'll be out of the way, not gonna have to worry about anything hitting it, but we can still access it pretty easily. In your kit, they are gonna give you a couple self-tapping screws. So we just use those to mount it directly against the metal right here. I'm gonna use one of the screws to get a hole started. 
And then once I have it started, I'll go ahead and put my breaker in place. And I'm using a 5 16 nut driver to put the screw in place. And I'll just loosely attach this one. Then I'll put another screw in on the other side to make sure the breaker's not gonna move around on me. Now if we look at our breaker, each terminal is gonna be labeled. One of them's gonna be labeled BAT for battery, and the other one's gonna be AUX for auxiliary. Now, that would automatically make you think that the copper colored post labeled battery is gonna to go to the battery. However, we're treating our motor home as the battery and it's charging our auxiliary power source, which is gonna be the battery in our Jeep. So we wanna hook up the power source to the battery, which will be from the motor home. So we'll take our wire. We'll get an idea of how much wire we need. Kind of tuck it down, cut off the excess. And we'll strip back the end of our wire. We'll grab one of the small ring terminals from our kit, slide it over our wire, and crimp it in place. Then we'll remove the nut from the copper post. Again, the one labeled battery, because that's going to be our power source. We'll slide the ring terminal in place. And for now, we're just going to tighten it up by hand, just to make sure it's not going to come off. Then we can grab the excess wire that we had left over, and we're going to strip back both ends, one end, We'll put another small ring terminal in place. The small ring terminal will go on to the silver post, label auxiliary. Again, we'll just put the nut back on, make sure it won't fall off. And we're going to route the other end of our wire towards the positive post on our battery. So again, we'll just see about how much we need. Make sure we have plenty of slack. I'll cut the excess off. Strip back the end, and this time we're going to grab one of the large ring terminals out of our kit. And we'll crimp it onto the end of our wire, and we're going to need to attach this to the positive post. So we'll grab a 10 millimeter socket so we can remove that nut. We'll slide our ring terminal over and then we can replace the nut. Take the wire loom that's provided in your kit, you can use it anywhere necessary, either underneath the hood or in the grill so it can hide the wire better, but now would be a good time to just clean up your install. And don't forget to come back with the 3A socket or wrench and tighten up the terminals on your breaker. One final thing I like to do to make sure that everything is working properly is test the center pin on the front of the plug. Now I'm going to be testing it with a circuit tester because since it is hooked to our battery, we should be getting a 12 volt power source here at the center, which also means that when we hook up our motor home, it's going to be able to accept the charge going to the battery. We are getting power at the center pin, but not in any of the other ones, which means that they are isolated and none of our wires crossed over. But once you have that hooked up and you verify that everything's working, that'll finish up your installation and your look at the Roadmaster Chargeline Kit for towed vehicles on our 2014 Jeep Cherokee.